Howdy folks, if you're watching this video, there's a good chance you're studying some real analysis. When we study real analysis, we work with the absolute value function a lot, which can be a bit of a pain, which is why we spend some time proving some basic results about absolute value that are quite useful. In today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving another such result. In particular, we're proving that the absolute value of a real number a is less than or equal to b if and only if, which is why I've got this bi-directional arrow, if and only if negative b is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to positive b. This also works in any ordered field, but we've got the real numbers in mind in particular. Notice if b is greater than or equal to an absolute value function, certainly b is non-negative. So the basic idea here, if this string of inequalities holds, then B is further away from the number line than A. Whether A is positive or negative, B is more positive than A, and negative B is more negative than A. So the magnitude of A, its absolute value, will be less than or equal to B. And of course, the other direction holds as well. If we know this, then we know this, and we'll prove, of course, both directions. It's gonna be plenty of fun. So this is a useful result for starters, if we know that the absolute value of a number is less than or equal to some other number, this result gives us a way to jump to an inequality that gets rid of the absolute value function, which is kind of nice. Additionally, going the other way, it gives us a strategy to prove that the absolute value of a number is less than or equal to some other number. We just have to prove that this relationship is satisfied, and then we get that absolute value relationship. It's a pretty straightforward proof, so let's just get into it with the first direction. I'll write this in blue. We're going to assume that the absolute value of A is less than or equal to B, and we're going to show that this must be true as a result. For starters, we can multiply both sides of this inequality by negative one in order to get another relationship for free. So we've got that negative absolute value of A is greater than or equal to, flipping the inequality since we're multiplying by negative one, is greater than or equal to negative B. Then we just have to notice one more thing and we will be able to walk our way right to the result. Remember, perhaps you've seen this before if you studied some real analysis, the negative of the absolute value of a real number is less than or equal to the number, which is less than or equal to its absolute value. That should seem pretty obvious. If A is positive, it's gonna be greater than its negative absolute value, and it's going to be equal to its absolute value. If A is negative, then it's going to be equal to the negative of its absolute value, and it's gonna be less than its absolute value. If it's zero, then these will all be equal. So this is a relationship we know is true uh, when dealing with absolute value. Then we just have to attach two things uh, at either end. We know that the absolute value of A is less than or equal to B, so let's stitch that on at the end of this string of inequalities. The absolute value of A is less than or equal to B. We also know that the negative of the absolute value of A is greater than or equal to negative B. So let's stitch that on at the end. The negative absolute value of A is greater than or equal to negative B. That completes the first direction of the proof. Negative B is less than or equal to A, less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to positive B. Beautiful, all right. I I'd switch to purple, but my purple's fading a little bit. So let's go with orange for the second direction of the proof. Now we're going to assume this and get our way back over here. So we're gonna assume that negative B is less than or equal to A is less than or equal to positive B. This will be a quick proof by cases, as is often the case <laughs> with absolute value proofs. It's useful to break it into a non-negative case and a negative case. So case one will be when A is non-negative. So A is greater than or equal to zero. If A is greater than or equal to zero, then by definition of absolute value, the absolute value of A is just equal to A, since A is non-negative. What do we know about A? Well, we know that A is less than or equal to B because this is our assumption for this direction of the proof. So A is less than or equal to B, and we're done case one. 
we have the absolute value of A, which is equal to A, is less than or equal to B, so that shows our desired relationship. Absolute value of A is less than or equal to B. Beautiful. Case two is when A is negative, so A is less than or equal to zero. So what do we know about the absolute value of A in this case? Well, by definition of absolute value, the absolute value of A is gonna flip its sign around. So since A is negative, the absolute value of A is equal to negative A. Now in the first case, we used this part of the inequality assumption. In case two now, we're gonna use this part of the inequality assumption. Let's just write that down here that A is greater than or equal to negative B. Now looking at where we want to get to, B is positive in the, or at least it doesn't have a negative factor. Like we said, it does in fact have to be non-negative itself since it's greater than or equal to uh, an absolute value function. Although we haven't quite demonstrated that yet. We're getting there. Um, Anyways, lost my place for a second. We, we want B to not have that factor negative one. That's where we're going. So let's multiply both sides by negative one. That's gonna give us that negative A is less than or equal to, flipping the inequality, is less than or equal to B. What do we know about negative A? Well, it's equal to the absolute value of A. So we can stitch on an equality here at the end. The absolute value of A, which is equal to negative A, is less than or equal to B, and that completes the second case of the second direction. The absolute value of A is less than or equal to B. That's what we wanted to prove. That's what we proved. We're done. We've proved both directions of the theorem. The absolute value of a real number A is less than or equal to a real number B if and only if A is between negative B and positive B with, of course, the allowance for equality. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove this handy absolute value result. I should whisper, it's very late at night and I'm very hot. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you appreciate these lessons on Wrath of Math, I'd really appreciate it if you considered making a small donation on PayPal or small monthly pledge on Patreon. You can check the description for links to those. Otherwise, just sharing the videos, liking and commenting is a great help. And uh, subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. Good night.